Thank you very much, particularly to the EHA board and the scientific committee for selecting this as late breaker. I'm really truly honored to present that on behalf of my colleagues. We were a research consortium of six study groups in Europe and Israel, including 11 countries um, in Europe working on this clinical trial. Here are my disclosures. And just as a short introduction for those who don't treat CLL patients daily, so when patients achieve advanced stage, our treatment decision in Europe at least is guided as shown here by the EHA guidelines according to genetic risk factors as TP53 operation, mutational status, but also to the age and fitness of the patients. And as you can see for elderly or unfit patients, we have the option between targeted treatments, including long-term treatment with BTK inhibitor, as well as time-limited treatment with the BCL2 inhibitor venetoclax in combination with obinituzumab, based um, for the latter one on data from the CL14 trial in this elderly patients population. Um, we do not yet have data in a randomized phase 3 trial for the fit patients on venetoclax plus obinituzumab, and therefore we treat those patients in many countries in Europe either still with chemoimmunotherapy when they have a favorable carrier type, a favorable IGBH status, or with continuous treatment with PTK inhibitors. And therefore, we as a research consortium in Europe wanted to address the question within this four-arm um, um, randomized trial in fit patients who were selected by a fitness score as well as normal creatinine clearance between the standard chemoimmunotherapy with FCR or BR. And due to that, um, all patients were centrally screened for TP50C mutation or operation and were then excluded or three different arms, all of them containing 12 months of treatment with venetoclonal and the study has two co-primary endpoints with an alpha split to 2.5%. The first endpoint was already met last year. That was the rate of undetectable MND at month 15 in the peripheral blood measured by flow between venetoclax, obinituzumab, and chemoimmunotherapy. And we will present here now the second co-primary endpoint, the PFS interim analysis for a triple combination combining venetoclax, obinituzumab, plus ibrutinib, given also at at least for 12 months with the possible extension up to 36 months. And there was also a fourth arm, um, venetoclax plus rituximab included, which was also allowed to be analyzed according to a statist statistical hierarchical ranking. So overall, 920 patients were included. And now after follow-up time of 38.8 months, we see the um, interim PFS analysis here that with the black curve, um, the triple combination venetoclax or Tuzumab plus ibrutinib was clearly superior to chemoimmunotherapy with FCR for the younger patients or BR for the elderly patients who were fit with a hazard ratio of 0.32. Also, the venetoclax obinituzumab therapy was clearly superior with a hazard ratio of 0.42, but um, ven uh, venetoclax plus rituximab was not superior. So it depends also on the antibody uh, which you combine to the venetoclax treatment. Looking at the two major subgroups in CLL patients with mutated and unmutated IGVH status. On the right-hand side, we see again that particularly prognosis is favorable for patients with mutated IGVH status where there is not such a big difference between in blue chemoimmunotherapy and the targeted agents, but we see a huge difference particularly for patients with unmutated IGVH status. With respect to the side effects, um, with, um, shown here all CDC grade C or higher side effects in 5% of the patients. Um, there were no major difference, particularly not between the two arms containing venetoclax plus obinituzumab, with the exception of um, higher rates of infections in febrile notopenia with the triple combination as well as with the chemimunotherapy. With that, I would like to summarize the results of the study. So time-limited targeted therapy with venetoclax plus obinituzumab with ibrutinib or without ibrutinib is superior to chemimunotherapy with respect to PFS and also with respect to undetectable MID rates. In particular, patients with unmutated IGVH status benefit from this targeted therapy and higher infection rates were seen with chemimunotherapy in the triple combination. And the question with respect to the head-to-head -head comparison of the triple arm versus the doublet arm, what is the additional benefit of abrutinib? We will be able to analyze that um, next year with the next follow-up. Thank you very much, and I'm happy to take questions.